Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the char data type in Java. Here is our outline. We will talk about the Unicode encoding scheme. We will talk about the char data type in Java. And finally, we will initialize some char variables. So let's get started. What is the Unicode encoding scheme? First of all, I want you to understand that computers see characters as binary numbers, all right? So all the data that is stored inside the computer is stored using the machine language, which is the binary language, all right? Even characters and strings, everything is stored in a binary format. So we say that each character is encoded and then stored in memory. So what is encoding? Encoding is mapping each character to its binary representation. And this is done with the help of an encoding scheme, all right? So in order to be able to store characters inside the computer, we will use what's called the encoding scheme. So Java uses the Unicode encoding scheme. So you can imagine this. A character will be converted to its Unicode representation. And after that, it will be stored inside the computer in binary format. Also, a binary format will be converted to Unicode, and then we will use this Unicode to know what is the character, all right? Everything will be clear when we see some examples. So now let's talk about the char data type. It is a type that is used with characters. So let's declare a char variable. We will use the char keyword and we call the variable C, all right? So let's see the range of characters. Have a look over here. This interval or this interval is the range of the characters in Java. So over here we are using Unicode representation, all right? And over here we are using numbers. So each number will represent a character, as you will see in a little bit. And also, these over here are characters. As you can see, we put them inside single quotes, and inside we have backslash u, and after that we have four numbers. And these numbers are hexadecimal numbers. So we start from zeros up until f, all right? And don't worry about it, it's not very important right now. So as you already know, characters are put inside single quotes. So for example, a capital A inside single quotes is a character. A star is a character. A semicolon is a character. Even a number inside single quotes is a character. So everything inside single quotes will be a character. And finally, a char variable takes two bytes in the memory. So now let's see some examples. As we said before, this over here is the range. So have a look over here. The capital letter A inside single quotes is a character. So in order to represent this character in Java, we can write a capital A inside single quotes, and also we can write this character over here. This is a Unicode character, backslash U0041, and it is also put inside single quotes. So if you use this character inside Java, you will be using the capital A, alright? And also, the integer 65 represents the capital A. So we can use the character like this, or we can use the Unicode representation, or we can use an integer. Another example. A small a has this Unicode representation, and it is the integer 97. And finally, the semicolon has this Unicode representation, and it is the integer 59. So let's see how we can use all of this inside Java. Let's initialize some character variables. So inside our main function, we will initialize some characters. First of all, have a look over here. I'm using the char keyword, and I'm naming the variable c1. And I'm assigning it to be equal to the capital letter A inside single quotes. So C1 will be the character A, all right? Also, I'm initializing a second character. It is called C2, and it is equal to 65. So Java will use the Unicode encoding scheme to convert this number to its correct character. And in this case, the character is A. So C2 will be also equal to A, all right? And finally, I'm initializing a third character. It is called C3, and I'm assigning it to be equal to this Unicode character, all right? And note that this will be inside single quotes. So Java will use the Unicode encoding scheme to see what is this character over here. And also this character is A. So all these variables contain the same value. It is the character A. But over here, we are putting the character itself inside single quotes. Over here, we are using the integer representation. And over here, we are using the Unicode representation. So now, suppose that we print C1 and C2 and C3. In all cases, we will see A printed, all right? Now let me show you this final example. Inside our main method, I'm going to create an integer variable which is equal to the character A. So Java will see that we are storing a character inside an integer variable. So it will convert this character to its correct integer representation. And to do that, it will use the Unicode encoding scheme. All right? And also over here, we have a second integer variable and we are assigning it to be equal to this Unicode character. 
So Java will also convert this Unicode character to its correct integer and it will store it inside code 2. So if we print code 1, we will see 65 and also if we print code 2, we will see 65 because 65 is the representation of this character and this character as an integer, all right? So now let's see all of this in action inside IntelliJ. So let's have a look at this code over here. We have three characters, C1, C2, and C3. The first one is equal to A inside single quotes. So we will have the character A stored inside C1. The second one is equal to 65. So this integer will be converted to the correct character. In this case, it is also A. So we will have A stored inside C2. And also C3 is equal to this Unicode character. And this Unicode character is also A, all right? So A will also be stored inside C3. So after that, I'm printing C1, C2, and C3, and we expect to see A as an output. Now let's have a look at this code over here. We have two integers. The first one is equal to A inside single quotes. So the character A will be converted to the correct integer, which is 65. So 65 will be stored inside code 1. And the same will happen over here. This Unicode character will be converted to 65, and 65 will be stored inside code 2, all right? And then I'm printing code 1 and code 2. Let's run the program, and here is the output. We can see A printed, and also we have 65 over here. Perfect. Now, I want you to practice working with characters and printing some variables. So, for example, over here you can put the letter N. Run the program, and over here we can see 78. So, 78 is the integer representation of the character N, alright? So, this is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.